Hey everybody, today on Rado Runs Through, we're taking a look at Sky Mines. But before I get going, please turn your subtitles on to the Klingon channel so that when I make rules goofs, you know what they are. And if you've done that, well then welcome to the belt, everybody, where four different mining corporations have come to extract precious minerals and generate a lot of profit. And in this game, we take on the role of private investors who are trying to push these uh, different corporations to even higher profits for our own benefit. Now I'm going to show you how it works today in a solo run through, which means it's going to be my operation over here going up against Luna, which is an automated player pretty much represented by this deck of cards. And Luna is pretty much capable of everything that I can do. And in fact, you could also throw Luna into a lower player count game. If you want to make a two player game work a little bit more like a three player game, Luna has got you covered. But again, I'm just show running solo, so it's just me versus Luna. Wish me luck. Okay, so how does the game work? Well, we've got a handy dandy little player aid here that breaks us through the three steps. First planning, then actions, and then prep for each of the seven rounds of this game. And um, if any of this looks familiar, it might be because about seven years ago, another game from the same designer, Alexander Pfister, came out called Mombasa. And this is basically Mombasa in space. Instead of uh, you know exploiting and colonizing Africa, we have come to the solar system. And it's interesting. This is a two-sided board. If I were to flip the board over on the other side, we've got the moon that we are trying to mine on. And if we were playing with the moon version, uh, this would play really uh, out of the box, about 95% the same as the original Mombasa. But I figured, what the heck? Let's go on ahead and show you the asteroid belt, which introduces a few extra twists along the way. Okay, so, uh, wish me luck. Here we go. How does it work? Well, first of all, we are going to plan. Every player takes their hand of cards and um, puts some cards face down, hidden on their on action slots. And then once everybody's done that, we reveal all these cards. So I've got a starting hand of 10 cards. Although I ended up with this little uh, setup chip that basically said, oh, these three cards, my level two minerals and my level one and my level two energy cards are exhausted right now. So of my 10 starting cards, I have lost three of them. But don't worry, I'll get them back later once they are ready to go. So I start with one, two, three slots. I'm going to program three of these cards into these slots to represent what my actions are as I try to invest in these different mining companies. Minerva, Astrogo, uh, uh, Twiak, and Skymine resources. So, what do I want to do? Well, there's a lot of things I can do. This is a huge game, both in terms of its gameplay and physically. It takes up a ton of space. But one of my favorite things about this game um, is their system for missions as part of setup. Although in the standard game, you don't use these missions. These are like a little extra thing you can turn on, which I highly recommend doing. In fact, I would recommend even brand new players play with the missions because they give you a sense of purpose and direction. In this one, we've got three different goals we could be going for. Having on hand six carbon, which is a big thing. Uh, you really have to work hard on that. Um, also, in a single player turn, finding three or four helium three. That's another big objective that you really have to build towards to be able to pull off. And then finally, unlocking each of your additional slots. Remember, I have three slots, but over the course of the game, I can unlock a fourth and a fifth. And if I've unlocked both of those, I will complete this. And when you complete any of these missions, you immediately get two coins and you get a bonus worker. This is a deck building slash worker placement game. And the more workers you have, the more stuff you could do. Now, this is a temporary worker. It's not one of the uh, uh, pieces of wood like my normal ones. But um, if I complete one of these, I'll get a bonus action, two bucks. And if I complete all three of these, I will have unlocked a bonus worker placement action that only I 
can use, and it's a very powerful one as well. So it's not required, but you are pretty heavily incentivized, if at all possible, to chase after those. And everybody would be chasing. If I were playing at a higher player count, you would have your own thing right here with your own little tokens, keeping track of if you have done these three. And I should say, every one of these cards on the backside has a different combination of different objectives we're chasing after. So every time you play, that you're going to get a little bit of a boost, a little bit of a kick in the pants to decide what you want to do. So in this game, right off the bat, if I want to be able to, in one turn, get four helium uh, three, which of course is the key to fusion, that's that's something I really need to work on. So that kind of gives me an overall goal. Because if I look over here, these are a bunch of personnel we could hire and add to our deck. And in the cheap seat, the cheapest spot of all, there is a field scientist. This field scientist only costs one plus zero. So only costs me one resource to hire this field scientist. And this field scientist is very good at getting more helium three. So I think I'd like to hire that scientist. Are there any other field scientists? Um, yeah, oh, there's this one over here, which can generate um, a lot, potentially. This one a field scientist could generate maybe all four helium that I need in one turn. But right now, that would cost me one, two, plus two. This would cost me four resources to hire this one. Whereas this one only cost me one resource. So I'm thinking, I definitely want to hire that field scientist to start working on the goal of getting more and more helium. Plus, getting more and more helium-3 is great anyway because it's um, one of the ways that I can unlock another one of these bonus card placement slots. And remember, if I unlock both of those, that's another objective. So, yeah, I think as the first player, the third, first thing I'm going to want to run out and do is grab that. So, one of my cards, or alternately one of my workers I am going to use to rush right out and hire that field scientist. Hmm. And now here's another thing I could be considering. Remember I mentioned this little token uh, basically to find three of my starting cards that were left out of my deck, so I'll have to collect them later. It also did something else. It said, I have a starting investment with the Skymine uh, Resources Company. You can see, I'm, you know, my, um, Luna, my opponent, is at zero. I've already got three steps. And one more step, I'll get a share. But if one, two, three, four, five, um, six, although it cost me a lot to make that last step, I will actually unlock an extra worker. That would be very nice as well. So I think, all things being equal, I would like to put myself in a situation where I can start investing more heavily in the Skymine organization. And the best way to invest in Skymine is by generating energy. Now, unfortunately, two of my three energy cards were left on the sidelines. But I do have one energy card. So how about I take this one for starters, I will, I will, I will take this. This is going to be one of the three cards I'm playing because, well, here's the thing. If I have, if I generate the majority of energy this round, then I can use this worker placement spot. They, these worker placement spots can only be grabbed by the player who generates the majority of energy, the majority of carbon, of titanium, of minerals, and of scientists. So. In a perfect world, I would like to have another energy card, definitely. Because, hey, if I, say, had this one and I had that one in my hand, if I played both, I'd generate four energy, I'd be very confident that I can get that um, worker placement spot and start working my way up in the, uh, uh, you know, investing in Skymine. But, okay, I can't. So it's a bit of a gamble, but I'm going to go for it anyway. What else do I want to do? Well, uh, what I do have, I've got two cards that let me um, uh, generate more titanium. And if I generate the majority of titanium, then that lets me make investments. Uh, there's a, If we zoom in there, let me go on ahead and try and zoom in a little bit so you can see. Although it's so far away from the camera. Yeah, if I have the majority of titanium, I can start getting free investments in Astrago over there. And... Astrago is interesting. If I work, uh, uh, first of all, my opponent Luna started with a little bit of investment. Oh, actually, no, that's not. They started with investment over here in Tawak. So 
I was going to say, if they had invested in Astrago, Luna has a tendency to want to continue investing in what they've already invested in. And the more they invest in something and the more powerful it gets, the more it makes sense for me to invest in it as well so I can get some dividends. Uh, and, you know, the more stock I have in a given company. But um, Luna really likes uh, to whack up there. And to get in good with Tawak, well, Tawak likes these blue uh, crystals, these minerals. And it just so happens, I my, my biggest my biggest mineral card is out too. So I've got a little tiny mineral card. You know, okay, tell you what, I will play this one so that I could potentially start uh, making friends with Tawak and maybe uh, ride on Luna's coattails there. So that's two of my three cards. So. Um, now, well, all I've got left is uh, my research scientist, which would let me start making some scientific breakthroughs. That's nice. Or I could, remember, I'm only playing three cards right now because I've got three slots. So I could go for like a level two titanium or a level two carbon. And again, if I get the majority compared to whatever Luna comes up with, then uh, that means I could get some freebie investments in the other companies as well. Let's let's take a chance. Let's put some titanium out there. Okay, so that was my hand of cards. And now I have to pick which of these three slots these three actions will go in. And that's, well, I would say that's hugely important if you're playing the full version of the rules. Because, um, say I put them out like this. When I eventually activate them, this card, because it's in this slot, would go up here. And start going into, I have three discard piles that I'm building at any given time. And at the end of the round, I get to reclaim one of these discard piles. So where you put these cards can be hugely important for recovering cards later. Now that's if you're playing with the advanced rules. With the standard rules, I could take these cards and put them in any of these slots I want, which again, I don't know if I agree with. That actually makes, if anything, I think it kind of makes the game a little bit more complicated uh, for first-time players. Um, you know, It makes it a little bit more forgiving, but at the same time, a bit more complicated. I'll talk about all that when I get to final thoughts. But anyway, I've got these three. I've got to decide, because I'm playing with the full rules, the original Mombasa rules, where if this is where I put it, I put it up here. And it doesn't make much sense for me to put this energy so it would go into the discard pile with this mineral. If anything, I think it makes sense to put this mineral so that when this comes up here, I could eventually recover both of my mineral cards. So I'm going to put that there. I think I'm going to put this big energy right there, so it'll join the other big energy in the discard, which means, to Ross Elimination, I'll put my scientist there. Now, at the beginning of the game, all players are making these kinds of decisions simultaneously. Which cards are they going to play? Which slots are they going to put them in? This is all part of the planning phase. And once everybody says they're done, then they reveal what they came up with. But now, Luna is a little bit different. And first of all, this is the actual proper layout of the board, but to make some room for Luna's cards, I'm just going to slide this down here. Functionally, it doesn't do it doesn't change anything. It just means this doesn't line up nicely with the color of the company, but this opens up the slots where I could play Luna's cards cuz I'm kind of it's a big game. Alrighty, So, Luna, as I'm picking which ones I want, Luna, uh, you know, shuffled up her deck. I have no idea what she's got up her sleeve. She's just going to do... These are the three actions she's going to do. And she then takes two more actions. And she puts these face up here. And this determines... Remember I was talking about majorities. If I have the majority in energy, if I have the majority in titanium or whatever, this is how Luna determines what her majorities are. So everybody reveals now. If I were playing a two-player game, I'd be revealing, my opponent would be revealing, and we'd be revealing the um, majorities for Luna over there. And if we look a little bit more closely at Luna, uh, for these cards that went up here, you can pretty much completely ignore all of this text. Instead, this just says Luna, for majorities, has three crystals, no energy, no carbon, and three titanium. She also has two scientists for scientist majority. That's what this little icon is right there. And it also says that right off the bat, she found herself two helium. So helium three, boom. So she's working her way up that path. And um, see, me... I actually made choices to try to get the majorities I want. Luna just picks a few at random. She's really strong in minerals. She's really strong in titanium. Which means my one mineral is not giving me the majority of her three. 
uh, you know, so she's got majority, which means this worker placement spot up here, I cannot go to because I would have to have the, um, I'd have to be either have the, the majority of uh, minerals available to me or at least be tied for it. But, so, that's out. But, hey, I do. She doesn't have any... No, she has three titanium. She beat my two titanium. No! But my two energy beat her zero energy. And that's the one I cared about the most. Remember, I was thinking, hey, if I had... Um, I might have actually gone with four energy to try to make sure I had the majority. As it works out, uh, just with two energy, I got the majority I needed up there. So, that's nice. That's where I'm going to place one of my three workers. But, anyway... This was all about planning. There's a ton of planning that goes in. You're trying to guess how will majorities work out, if there's something you particularly want, what cards do you have in your hand, where are you going to put them to go into the discard pile later, etc. And then everybody reveals, and then we move on to the next round, or the next uh, portion of the round, where we start taking turns doing action. And I am the first player, so on my turn, I can choose one of these actions. I can spend resources, in this case, two titanium or one mineral, to be able to recruit more personnel into my deck. I could deck build by spending these resources. And or I can spend those resources to make investments in the four companies. And um, remember, the more successful a company is, the more I want to be invested in it to be able to reap the rewards at the end of the game when dividends come in. Right, so I could spend my resources to do that. Instead, if I've got any energy cards, I can spend them, I can use all my energy I put into my queue to ensure that one of the corporations starts using that energy to spread out into the belt and start grabbing all these bonuses. So I have some energy. That's something I'm going to do this round. I've also got some resources. I'm going to use these to probably either invest in personnel or invest in the companies, or both. Now, if I'd played any scientists, research scientists, I could start doing research, but I did not. My research scientist is still here in my hand. I did not play that, so I'm not going to be doing that this round. And at the beginning of the game, no player has any field scientists. So I have to recruit them. And I want to recruit them because remember, we've got this objective, this public objective. It's not a race. Anybody can do this anytime they want. It's not like if somebody gets there, then nobody else can do it afterwards. But I want to get those field research scientists so I can start generating big amounts of helium so I can unlock this bonus. So, field science, I don't have any. And then lastly, my turn, instead of using any of the cards I've queued up, which is what all of these are, I could instead place a bonus marker, or in what another game you would call a worker, into a vacant bonus space, or what another game would call a worker placement space. And now lastly, I can drop out. If Once I've run out of workers and cards, I'm going to pass, and we'll deal with that later. So, I am the first player. These cards are useless. Right off the bat, do I rush right out and use these cards to recruit? Because remember, I want this. Luna, I don't know what Luna is going to do. After I'm done, Luna is going to reveal the first card. Luna could grab cards out of here. Luna could grab research. Luna could invest in companies and have them actually start moving all around. Luna could grab the worker placement spots that I want. So it, I better take advantage of being first right now. And I really want this card. It's super cheap. Remember, it only costs one resource, one plus zero. And there are two ways I could get it. Since it only costs one, I could use my one mineral um, to grab that. I could overpay and use my two to grab it, but that's overpaying. All well, the interesting thing is, two titanium is not going to get me. I mean, the next cheapest thing costs two plus one. This is three, three. Oh, hey, I take it back. Here's a research scientist down here that costs one plus one is two. So I could use this. I could spend two titanium to recruit this person. Interesting. But there's another way I could recruit as well. Remember, I've got these workers. Uh, first one out of the gate, I could come over here and I could spend money to recruit these cards instead of resources. But unfortunately, at the beginning of the game, I don't have enough. I've got one credit, or crypt coin, it's called. Um, I just like to think of them as big old credits. It's the future, we've got credits. I spend one credit to get here, and then I would have to spend credits equal to the cost. So if I had two credits, I could grab this. I do not. So I'm not going to come there. I am worried that my opponent might take it. So my inclination is to spend the one mineral I have to recruit this one cost person and add them to my deck so I can start getting helium in the future. So let's do that, and let's snag this. goes right into my hand. 
my turn is over. And you'll notice this space does not refill. It will not refill until everybody passes and we move on to round two, like the second decade of our um, of mining operations in the belt here. So I am done. Now, if I were playing against a human player, they would either use one of their workers or one or more of their cards to do something like what I just talked about. But that's not what's happening right now. Instead, Luna reveals their first card and does a bunch of stuff. On the company track, on which Luna leads by the biggest margin, she moves up two. And so she was already... Which one was it? Oh, yeah. She loves to whack. So she moves up two. Boom, boom. Okay. So she gets a little something nice for having made it up there. Uh, because she crossed this line, she gets a coin. She's richer than me. So good for Luna. And... Um, she has also, if she were a human player, she would have unlocked this ability to be able to trash cards from your deck and um, convert them into money at a better rate than normal. Uh, Luna doesn't care about the special powers. She just moved up. Um, she's already now got one share in Twack Industries, and she's not done yet. She moved up two. Then she expands that company. She's now got two energy to have them expand into the belt. And she wants to go to the lower value places. This could have said two min or two max. It said two max, she wanted to go to the higher value places. But instead, it says two min, she wants to go to the lower value places. So it's the same thing as if I had two energy and I would spend it to pick a company and have them start expanding. Luna has said to whack um, industries will start expanding with two energy. And if we look a little bit more closely, you'll notice uh, Twack already has shuttles to asteroid number one. Uh, and asteroid number six. And remember, she wanted to go minimum, which means she wants to go this way. If she'd had max, she would have gone this way. So first of all, since she already has a shell here, she doesn't have to spend any energy to hop over here, but she has to spend one energy to set up an operation in either of these two spots. So she will go on ahead and take her first one and set up there. And... If uh, if Luna were a human player, Luna would now get the benefit of one helium and one credit for having made it to this asteroid. But Luna doesn't care about any of that stuff. Luna just automatically, passively earns things. So, Luna still has one more energy. And again, if Luna were a human player, here's an interesting thing that isn't true. On the, on the moon side of the map, in every sector of the moon, only one outpost can be installed. And if a new player tries to move in, the old one gets kicked out. But on these asteroids, you can have multiple outposts. But Luna doesn't go for that. Luna always wants to move on to either shuttle spots or other asteroids and spread out as far as she can. So she's not going to pick this. She um, So the next thing she'd like to go to, she'd like to go over here to number two, but it would take one, two energy to get there. One to get there and then one to establish a permanent shuttle route. So she doesn't have two energy left. So instead, with her one energy, hey, this asteroid over here is the next best bet. She won't take that. So instead, she's going to come over here here. And so now Tawak has jumped on two asteroids. And again, she would get these benefits if she cared, but she doesn't. She's just automatically helping Tawak expand and grabbing space and creating something that maybe I want to invest in as well. The more this company succeeds, the more they're going to pay out at the end of the game. And maybe I want my investment to rise a little bit as well. So anyway, that was it for Luna. She just uh, somehow, by hook or by crook, she knew somebody, worked, you know, made a couple of investments, and then helped them expand a little bit. That's it. Luna's turns are very simple. You just do what the card says, and uh, now we come back to me. Okay, so I've still got my three workers. I've got two more here, and this is interesting. I've now got two titanium, right? And remember, I was talking about how I could use two titanium to recruit this research science. It costs one plus one. And I would like to do that. But I would also, before I do that, I'd like to take one of my workers and send them up here to the, which one is it? To the titanium space. Because if I had the majority of titanium on hand, I would be able to send a worker up here. And that would let me move up two steps on um, Astrogo and start working my way towards this particular bonus. If I can make enough investments to cross this line, then for the rest of the game, every time I try to recruit a card, I get a one titanium discount. So titanium would become much more valuable for me. So I would love to snag that power, but I can't come here because I've only got two titanium while Luna has 
three titanium on hand. Remember, she just randomly said, oh, I've got three titanium and I've got three uh, minerals. So here's the thing, though. Once Luna has done her other two actions, one of these two cards is going to go away. And if I'm lucky, it could be the one that's blocking me. So here's the deal. I could use this titanium right now to recruit this card, but I'm going to wait and I'm going to hope to, um, that uh, Luna spends her titanium someplace else. And in doing that, leaves me with the majority of titanium so that I will be able to get in good with, um, which one was it? Oh, Astrogo. And then after I've done that, then I'll spend my titanium to invest in this person. Now, that's a little bit of a risk, and this is true for a multiplayer game too. Bird in the hand, two in the bush. Other players can see this is the cheapest thing to recruit right now. Luna might snag that. Another human might snag that. So, do I say, to heck with it. Okay, I don't have majority of titanium. Let me just go on ahead and spend it right now and recruit this, or do I wait? Because maybe I'll have majority a little bit later. And that's the exact same thing you deal with when you're playing against other players. Yeah, I might not have majority now, but I might have it later. And the thing I have to ask myself is, does my opponent care about using one of their precious workers to go there? Because there are a bunch of other worker placement spots that are all very valuable. So... With that in mind, here's one thing I do have is majority on energy, right? I've got two, and Luna said, oh, I don't have any on hand. So while I've got that majority, I'm going to come over here because I've got the max energy. And uh, again, if we look a little bit closer, it says, oh, did you have the max and you come here? Well, if it's two energy you have, you get to move up two steps on Sky Mine Operations, an investment of level two, and get a coin. That's not bad. Get some credits. Now, if I had four total energy when I made this move, I'd move up three steps of investment or even four steps of investment if I had six energy, which would be nice, but I've just got two. So I've got the two energy. I don't have to spend this right now. I just show that I've got it. I move over here and that gives me one coin. So now with two coins, well, with the two coins, I could have bought this instead of using my minerals. Say, LV, we're not going to worry about that. And I move up two levels on Sky Mine. Boom, boom. I already started out at level three. I've moved up two more. And now I have got one share in this company. At the end of the game, I will get points based on how much their mining operation has expanded. The more I go up, the more shares I get. I could have ultimately eight shares and I would multiply that by, who knows, five, six, seven uh, total value of this. That could be a big part of my end score. But more importantly, I'm just trying to move up here, although I'll have to have five credits to make this jump so I can unlock a permanent fourth worker. And then ultimately, even a fifth worker if I can make it all the way up there. So that's what I'm focusing on right now. So I used my majority to come over there, and that was it. I can still use this energy later, the same way you saw um, Luna do it, to have another company, or heck, even the same company, expand more if I want. But worry about that later, because now we're moving on to Luna's second action. And Luna says, hi, I'd like to get two credits, and I'd like to push my scientific research up one. And that's what this says. So Luna gets a little bit more rich. And she just makes it look so easy, and her science climbs up by one. Oh, she makes it look so easy. Me, I've got to make all kinds of investments to pull something like that off. But she's not done yet. She says, hey, she's going to put one of her workers um, onto one of these worker placement spots over here, this group, that matches the uh, slot she's in. She is in slots. This card was in slot C, so that means Luna is going to come here. This would have cost two coins, and what that means is Luna has prevented me from getting an extra scientist that I could use next round. Luna has taken that for herself, just like a regular player might do. Okay, so that was it for her. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Now we are moving on again. Because I have successfully used my um, energy, I don't need it anymore. I think, let's go on ahead and, you know, I, I used it for majority. Uh, and that's done. So let's go on ahead and spend that energy and um, start expanding an operation of my own. Although remember, when I get energy, I take all the energy. If I'd had multiple energy cards, I would activate them all at the same time. I'd sum that up and I could either spend that energy um, into expanding through the belt, like you saw Luna do before, or I could pump that uh, directly into investments. No, wait, no, 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 that's not true. 
I was thinking of this. That's uh, resources. You can have resources either let you recruit cards or work your way up the company investment tracks. Energy is all about expansion. This is the way it works on the moon. Here's the way it works in the belt. One energy per this token plus one if you're going to kick somebody out of a region that you're trying to move into. Okay, so what do I want to do? Well, remember, I like Sky Mine, so it might make sense for me to start pushing that. So, which of my two shuttles that are built in, these will never get ousted, these are never placed. Do I want to expand over here and co-occupy this, uh, um, oh, what do you call it? Although, remember, I don't own this company. Luna doesn't own this company. I want this company to succeed if I make a lot of investments in it. And if I don't make a lot of investments, I want this company to fold. So maybe it's time to take a hostile takeover of that asteroid. Let's do that. Remember, I have two energy to spend. I will pick one of my two outposts uh, from the top of either of these rows. And I will, it doesn't cost me energy. It doesn't cost me energy to get this for my starter shuttle, but then it costs me one to get right there. And I do get a bonus. I found one helium three and one more credit. Credit. And hoorah, let's take my first little bit of helium-3. And this is huge. This is a long and winding track. But helium-3 is the uh, source of fusion in the future. And so the more of it I can get, the more points I get. But also, if I can cross a certain threshold, I will unlock a fourth slot. So I can be playing four cards every turn instead of three. Plus, don't forget... There's an objective to try to unlock both of those extra slots. So I've got that going on. So I've taken my first little bit of helium, and I've taken one credit, and I still have one more energy. So with that other energy, I could either take this one or this one and move over to this asteroid. Or no, Actually, that's all I can do because I would need two energy to make it over there to um, increase my the value of my investment into Skymine if I got Skymine over there. Now, here's the other thing, too. No, I can't quite. I could say... Oh, first of all, I should say... I, I, I've cheated a little bit, folks. This is why you watch with the Klingon subtitles turned on. Because there's actually a very important procedure for when a human player, not Luna, does this. I actually say, hey, this is the space I'm going, but I don't get those rewards immediately. Not until I have spent all my energy do I then flip these down to indicate how uh, what I'm actually going to get in terms of rewards. Because it's not like I could maybe use the reward I get on one asteroid to then go to a different reward. You know, that kind of thing. So, I have one more energy. And I was thinking, oh, I wouldn't mind kicking, um, what's it, uh, Tawak out, you know, basically reducing the value of their company that I don't have any investment in and giving my, unlocking a bonus Helium-3 plant here that I could snag if I have both of these spaces. But to do it, I would need one energy to occupy that spot plus one more energy to kick this out. I don't have I don't have enough energy to do it. So with my other energy, I think I am just going to come over here to this asteroid. So boom, I have now spent all my energy. I had to. I moved over here. I moved over here. And remember, again, on the moon side, players can't cohabitate like this. But in the asteroid belt, you can. So anyway, now I go on ahead and activate these. I want this one gives me two coins. This one gives me one coin and one helium. Okay, boom. I have spent my energy. And um, by choosing these two, you'll notice I have revealed two coins. That has increased the overall value of shares in Sky Mine resources by two. I have one share, so at the end of the game, this one share is worth two bucks, i.e. two points, because money is points in this game. So that was it for me. It is now time for Luna to do her third turn. And see, this is what I'm gambling. I am hoping, hoping, hoping Luna does not take this. Because if she didn't, then that means I played my cards right. Uh, because there's a chance, no, not a guarantee, that I'd be able to use this to get the titanium bonus. So let's see what her third action is. She says, hi, I'd like to move up two on the most valuable company track. Because I can, because I'm Luna. And hey, what company is the most valuable? It's Skymine, because I've revealed two of these. It's one over there. So she says, oh, I'd like to move up two here. Boom. And so now she's challenging my investments. Ah! But she's not done yet, folks. Luna discards the B and C research plans, which means she's going to snag one of these. Phew. My research scientist is safe. Hopefully I'll be able to recruit them. So she's going to take two of these. One from the B row, one from the C row that matches... D. She was in slot D. So that is these two. Boom, boom. 
She just took both of these lines of scientific research. Okay, which, honestly, I don't mind because... I haven't even talked about that yet. There's so much in this game. You can focus on science. You can focus on operations. You can focus on personnel. You can focus on investments. You can focus on worker placement. Ah, so much. Anyway, the, she ended up grabbing one that is um, researching minerals and one that is researching energy plus a big amount of any resource. This one I would have liked to have, but I don't mind not getting it. This one I don't care because as part of my setup... This is my starting bit of research. I'd like to research carbon and titanium. If she had snagged one of these, like this one. Oh, I didn't even notice this one's here. I want this one. Because this would allow me to continue my research into titanium and carbon. This is perfect for me. I desperately want to grab that now that I've noticed it. And I'm very, very glad that Luna did not. She ended up getting something that no doubt was important to her. But anyway, so these are gone as far as I'm concerned. And that's it. Now, as soon as Luna does her third step, because by the way, on the backside of this multiplayer player aid, there's a Luna player aid. And this reminds how what she did during her planning, um, how she got a little bit of, uh, of the uh, helium and um, you know she declared what her ma uh, majorities were and all that. And then she takes turns revealing her cards, doing whatever it is they're going to do. After she's done with all of that, once she flipped the last, her rightmost card, we take these three cards, we shuffle them up, and I like my chances. Based on these three cards, which I didn't know what was coming, I've got a 66% chance that things are going to go my way. So, she shuffles them up. Shuffle, 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 never a kerfuffle. This is the shuffling song. Boop, boop. All righty. And she discards these. So we'll just we'll say this is her discard spot. All right. Yes, boom. So we look at the top of her discard pile. Whichever number is higher, she eliminates that card. Because this is higher, she eliminated that. And it's as if she just spent her titanium on something. Which means, boom, I'm now King Titanium, which means, boom, I can get that majority space. And she never used it. She still has three crystals, which I don't care about because I got rid of my crystals a long time ago. Boy, I would have been really bummed if this went away because then I could have had majority on crystals. But it worked out very, very nicely. And now, she's done. She's not going to do anything else. I've still got two more workers, one more card to do. I'm going to do some more stuff, but she is out. She just did three things, but she really got a lot of stuff done. She's made big investments in companies. She's expanded. She's made a lot of money. Luna is trouble. Okay, so anyway, we are done with her. Back to me. Now, I will take my worker and look, I've got... I'm King Titanium. I will come over here. I've got the most. And because I have two at least, I move up two levels over here. If I move up a couple more, I get a share in Astrago. And if I make it over here, I get a coin and I unlock the ability to make my Titanium more powerful for recruiting people. Yes. We go to her, she's out. If we were playing with another human player, they would go and then she'd be out. I mean, you know, it just keeps on going around. It's my turn now. Let's use this titanium. It's two to recruit this research scientist. Noise. She's already out. She's passed. And now I've still got one more action. All my cards are done. Where am I going to go with this? Well, I do not have majority of, t of crystals or carbon or scientists. So I can't do any of those actions. And I haven't unlocked any bonus worker placement spots like this one over here, let's say. She's unlocked a bonus worker placement spot, but she doesn't care about that. So let's come over here and look at these. Right, let's come on and slide her on down. So she's taking this. I cannot recruit this. But for two coins, I could get myself another... Oh, oh my gosh, could I do it? Could I complete that objective? Yes, I could. If I recruit this field scientist, they if I use them in the next round, they will generate two helium plus one for every field scientist I have. And remember, I just recruited a field scientist. Yes, I think this is my go. I have four coins. I'm going to spend two of them so that I can recruit this person for round two. But there are other things I could do. I could spend one coin to come over here. This would increase the output of one of my resource cards. That could be very, very nice. Or I could come over here, and I could hold on to first player, and I could do some... <gasps> oh! I remember there was this bit of science 
up here. This particular bit of research tile, I want that one really bad. It's in the row that only costs one science. If I come over here, I could get the one science I need to grab that. But you know what? It's not going anywhere. Fingers crossed, I can grab it next round. So what else could I do? Even though I know this is totally what I'm doing. Well, I could come over here. I could spend a credit plus additional credits to recruit. Um, and I do have four. I mean, I had four credits. That means I could um, spend one to get in here and then three to recruit pretty much almost any any of you know any of these. I could get another one, and they're more powerful cards. More titanium, more minerals. Although, interestingly, interestingly, more carbon. Remember, um, we are trying to get to a spot where if I could generate six carbon in one turn, I could unlock that bonus, which means I could get this card. And here's the deal, folks. These cards are out. At the end of the round, these are all gone. The other ones slide over and get cheaper, and new ones come out. This is my last chance to get that. Oh, and I could afford to do it. But if I come over here instead, I could, I, you know, I could get my helium game going fast, fast, fast. Oh, okay. Another thing I could do is I could come over here. I haven't talked about this one. This one, and yet, because it, now she could have, all her actions could have been blocking these spaces like a human player would do, but she was doing other stuff. She only blocked one space. So um, I could come over here. This says trash one card. You know, remove it from the game and get two credits plus the value of that card. So I could thin my deck out, which in this game doesn't really help. It just takes away flexibility, but can be a quick influx of cash if you're desperate for some other action. Mm. I don't need that. So it really comes down to, do I, I could go for the science to grab that science tile, and I would hold on to first player. But you know what? She didn't take it from me, so I'm not going to lose first player anyway. She did not. She could have come to this space. She didn't. So I could get the science tile. I could get the carbon that I need for the objective, or I could get the temporary extra scientist and do the helium right now or next round. Oh, I swear. This is what I want to do, but this isn't going anywhere. I could recruit this person temporarily in round two to use in round three. This might be my last chance at big carbon for a while. So I'm going to do it. I'm going to come over here. So, what was it? This card costs two plus one. That's three. Which I could have used three resources to get, but instead I'm using three coins plus one more. And that bankrupted me. I had four. I've spent all four of my credits to get this carbon card. Oh, I hope I don't regret that because that would have been so cool. Alrighty. So, that was that. I've used all my workers. Um, she's done everything she's doing. So now... When it comes back around to you, after you... I mean, if I can't do any of these other things because I don't have any workers or bonus markers, I don't have any cards doing the other stuff, then I would drop out. And what that means is I flip these cards back up so I'm reminded of what they are. Let's come back over here and look at these a bit closer. I pick one of these three discard piles to reclaim. I could reclaim the double crystal uh, or uh, mineral. I could reclaim the single energy or the double energy. Energy is important for expanding operations. But here's the deal. If I don't take that double energy, this is going to come back there. And then on a future turn, I could claim both of these. And then in the following round, have four energy to play. Because right here's the problem. I have to claim one of these before these come up here. Oh, this is tough. I, don't, I think I'm going to leave the crystals so that eventually I can get a double one. And I think I will leave the energy. So I'm going to reclaim this single energy. What am I going to do with a single energy? Do I have any other energy in my hand? No, I don't. A single edge. What's that going to do for me? A big fat wad of nothing. It will get me this other space over here, but I've already gotten the coins out of this. There's no reason for me to take this. I could continue working on towards this other asteroid with one energy. But I would need two energy to get here. Or two energy. To, no, 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 no. I'm, 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 I'm going to take the two energy. I'm taking the two energy. Boom. All right. So this goes back in my hand. And now these other ones, if you were playing the regular version of the game, uh, the, the more introductory, I could take these and I could move this over here and combine them. So, but in the more advanced version, they've got to go in the slots where you play them. And honestly, I think that is the best way to play. So you can see on a future turn, I could set myself up to bring back three minerals or two energy or two, um, one energy and two titanium. So that'll be on a future turn. I'll recover one of those bundles. Okay. So 
Uh, that's what I do. I, I, I pick one of my resting decks, and then I move my other stuff to the resting decks. And uh, my opponent is already out. I'm out. So we have finished the first of seven rounds, uh, seven decades. So we now start repairing, preparing for the next one. This one, research scientist, bye bye Nobody loved you. Sorry. You go into a discard pile. There are actually ways, there are some powers you can get that let you get cards back out of the discard pile, if I recall correctly. Uh, anyway, the remainder come over, get a little bit cheaper, and look at this, folks. It's another carbon. If I can get this card, I had a double carbon to begin with. I got one last turn. If I can get this one on a future turn, I could play all three carbon, which means I generate the six and complete that objective. So I want that, my precious. I want it. All right, anyway. Oh, and then uh, new cards come out. And they go into that slot, that slot. You can see they're actually number 9, 10, 11, 12. So you just fill them up in numerical order. And, oh, a triple titanium. And a super scientist, and and more energy, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And these are interesting. This is a card that generates energy, and it's also one share in the Sky Mine Resources Corporation, which could translate into points at the end of the game, depending on how successful Sky Mine is. All right, so uh, we have done that. Oh, whoops, 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 a dee doops. Hey, folks, I totally forgot. This again, this is why you watch Klingon subtitles. These don't refill until the end of the round. These refill at the end of a player's turn once they were taken. So I should have put out this and this immediately at the end of Luna's previous turn. And I totally forgot to do it. Luna takes her other card. She is done as well. And we now move on to round two. And now here's an interesting thing. A second, because nobody grabbed any of these science tiles, that means nobody got a free coin. These were uh, hot offers in the scientific community. Anybody who would have grabbed them would have gotten an extra coin. Now there's two coins on offer for grabbing one of those. Nice, nice, nice. And there's another tile that could be grabbed. We could be doing scientific research, um, or this is actually, I guess, more kind of corporate money research. And these are, sci and, but remember, this is still the one I want because it's perfectly tied in with research, I already need to do. I want to grab that one eventually. And um, the game begins again. It's going to be time for me to um, pick three cards. Oh, also, get our workers back. Forgot about that. Boop, boop, boop. And there's hers. So, we go again. Mm, all right, okay, okay, okay. So, I want that. And there are two ways to get it. Remember, coming over here, but it would cost me one, two, three, four. I have no money. Now, I could get some money by trashing a card. Um, and then, you know, that would that would be a way to do it. Or I would need four total resources to get this. It costs one, two, three. And how do you get resources? Well, hey, I could play uh, I could play three carbon. If I play these two cards, that'll get me the three carbon I need to get in that. And then, I mean, I'll eventually need to recover that carbon. The, the double carbon plus this carbon plus this carbon? Mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. So two of my three cards are going to be a single and a double carbon so that I can grab this. Because, I mean, it's it's whenever you are recruiting these people, uh, there's a reminder, buy one um, or more cards. I'm sorry, no. Use one or more cards of a single type to buy one card and or advance on any company track. So, so that's interesting. If I instead, I mean, heck, if I wanted to, these could be my three cards. And when I reveal them, I would very, very likely have the majority in carbon. I would have five total carbon. And that means, hey, I could spend three of it here, and then I could take the other two carbon and invest more in one of the companies, any ones I wanted. So I could do that, but there are other things to do. I want that science tile bad. So I think this round, it is time for me to bring um, a research scientist to bear. Okay. Hmm. So let's say one of my cards is going to be a research scientist so I could snag that for future uh, endeavors. And hmm. All right. So I put this out. Remember, I'm, I'm picking three cards to play and then I got to pick which slots they go in. Hmm. Do I have any more titanium? Yeah, I do. I have a single titanium. Oh. So I've got another option. Um, doing, you know, this research scientist, one of the actions it lets me do is actually move forward on my research track. Remember, uh, they already did once, but for me to move forward, I need to do this to be able to move forward. 
from where I've done no research to here, I need to have in my display one carbon and one titanium. So if I had those, if I did a carbon and a titanium, and my research scientists, these three cards together, would let me take my first level, which isn't much. I mean, that'd be nice to start working, but I want to get some more slots, and I want to like get three or four different research projects going, and then with one scientist, boom through all of them really fast. So I don't think I care about that right now. I'm going to stick with my big carbon plus science plan. This is my goal. But now I have to put them in slots, knowing that they will eventually go into these discard piles. I don't think I... Let's see. I'm going to want this one back. I'm going to want this back very quickly so that I can go for that six carbon thing. So which one of these piles am I going to take back? Not a thing... Uh, you'll probably... Probably the one that has the energy and the titanium. So let's say I'm going to put that there. And this is probably... No, 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 no. It, I won't be able to get this back. I forgot. I won't be able to get this back this turn. I won't be able to get this back till the following turn if I use it. Urgh. But I really want that card. Is there any other way that I could... All I've got is carbon. All my crystals and my titanium, or almost all my titanium are tied up there. The only way to do it would be to do this, which would cost four coins. Can I get myself four coins? Well, I could by coming over here and trashing a card. I don't want to trash any cards right now. I could also remember, I got some coins by um, doing mining operations. Like coming over here, you can see there were two mines, so I got two coins there. I mean, there's a... Oh, are there any other nice just influx of cash spots around here? No, there aren't really. I don't want to start trashing cards. Oh! All right, that's fine. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. I still want to get this because remember, at the end of the round, this is going to go away. And this is my key to unlocking the six carbon. So I'm going to stick with my carbon initiative and my scientists. I'm still trying to pick out where they're going to go. All right, then... Um, yeah, let's go on ahead and put this one over here and put this... No, no, no. Let's put this level 2 carbon over here because I want to recover that sooner than later. And, you know, so if this comes up here, I'll get a really big influx. So we'll do that. And I'll put my scientist over here and I'll put the other carbon over there. All right, so I've made my choices. Everybody be doing this simultaneously. Meanwhile, Luna draws three more cards. We'll find out what she's got up her sleeve later. But in addition to that... She says, hey, I've got four carbon, and I've got three energy and one scientist, but she didn't do any other little bonuses. So, crap, my three carbon are not going to beat her four carbon. No, I can't do the max carbon space over there, which would let me make investments in the uh, TWAC Industries, which is the one that she's starting to make more valuable. Ugh! Shoot! All right, anyway, say la vie. It's like she knew that Luna. But anyway, we go on ahead and reveal. She's revealed what her majorities are, what my majorities are. She did not take first player for me, so I am first out of the gate. And I don't want to mess around. I want to grab this because she could take this at any time. So I need one, two, three, either plus one coin or one, two, three resources. And now that is perfect. If I spend one, two, three... I add this to my hand. Boom. So now I've got two uh, big carbons plus one more. I'm going to be set for this pretty soon. All right. And the thing is, I could have waited on these because maybe this would have gone away. And then maybe that meant, hey, before I spent this carbon, I could have done the max action. But I'm just going to let it go. I don't want to invest in that company. To heck with that. So I just spent two of my three resource cards. And it is her turn. What is she going to do? She says, hi, I'm Luna. I'd like to get two credits because money just flows like water for me. And I'd like to get some more research for free because it's so easy. And then, oh, she's going to block another worker placement spot. All right, so she was in space B, which is this one. Oh, she's going to block that one, right? Yep, that's what she blocks. All righty, fine. Didn't want that scientist anyway. Okay, it is my turn again. So, I... Um again, I am worried that she might snag stuff before I can get my, my hands on it. So I'm gonna before I use any of my workers, I'm gonna go in ahead and use my scientist. And a few things are gonna happen. First, uh, when I use my scientist, I can spend two credits, which I do not have, to complete any research tile I want. If I've got a research tile in my overall um, list of 
projects I have to do and I can't do it, it's just a bad fit for everything, I can just spend money and flip it over and just get it done yeah, quick and easy. I can pay somebody else to do it, basically. Somebody do my homework. I'm not doing that. Then I can move up. And it's at this point that if... All right, I'm right here. If I could show that I've got one carbon and one titanium, I could move up and I'd get a, a credit. I can't show that because I've flipped everything back face down. So I'm skipping this. This is what I came for. I am getting two research points that I can spend up here. Boom. And all if I want, I can convert research directly into money if I'm short on cash. But you already know, I'm, I've got two. This is the first one I want. This comes from the, the row that costs one, and I will put it in the next slot. Boom. And now what that means is, on a future turn, when I activate a scientist and get this particular action, instead of just moving forward one, I could move forward two. If I can show that I've got two titanium and one carbon, I could zip along here quicker. If my next space also needed carbon and titanium, I could, in a single action, move really far if I can build up the right type of research. And once I move a certain distance, once I make it to here, once I research one, two, three, four, five times, I, oops, I unlock this, which means I can start playing more cards. And remember, that's a goal in this game. Unlock the left and the right side. Unlock the uh, left side by getting more helium-3, unlock the right side by doing some research. And, I mean, uh, Luna over there, she's doing pretty good. She only has to get two more steps forward before she unlocks, and she starts doing four actions a turn while I'm still only doing three. But anyway, so, I remember I had two total um, science research points. I've spent one of them. This doesn't refill until the end of my turn. And so, I think I'm going to spend another, and I want to grab this one, this one, or this one, because I'll also get two sweet, sweet credits. So, which one of those do I grab? Oh. Oh, oh, I think I like uh, this one. Because this one says, hey, I can do this research if I've got two carbon and two energy. Hmm. So, I mean, that is kind of being continuing with my, hey, I need carbon for this, I need carbon for this. And I need carbon for that. But now, to be able to, in one science action, be able to move three steps up here, I need carbon, I need, um, what is it, uh, titanium, and I need energy. And to be able to generate three resources like that, plus get a scientist out, that means I need to be able to play four cards. One card for the titanium, one card for the carbon, one card for the energy, and one card for the scientist. But that, you know, so if I unlock this by doing some more, you know, by unlocking this, then in one turn, I could move all of those up. I could, I could be doing these little incremental. Every time I play a scientist, hey, just move up a little bit. Um, or I could set myself up for a big, massive turn if I take that one. Um, so let's go with that one. Or, you know what? Actually, hold on a second. I didn't look that more closely. This one is even easier. This one just requires two energy, and it generates two credits, the same as the other one. This I should take this one instead. Totally. Okay, so I take that one. So now, maybe on a future turn, I'll do science, and if I have two titanium and one carbon, I'll be able to move up here, and then I'll get a coin. And then on a future turn, I'll try to get some more energy-based ones here, and then try to make a big rush over here doing a bunch of energy all at once. That makes sense. Because, oh yeah, there's this other one over here that just requires two energy. Now I want this one, and I want it to be a continuation of that. So I can I can do this as a, as, a, as a project, and then this as a continuous bunch of projects. Right. Okay, cool. Although this one costs two energy. Wait a minute. Hold on a second. The reason this one is so nice is because it's in the sea. It costs two energy. I can't afford that. I spent one energy, or not energy, one science, and I'll take this one. I'll take this one. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. Or no, I will not take it. But if I, if I take it, I get the coins. Arr! Arr! Yeah, okay. I'll take it. I'll take it. I'll take it. Okay, it's fine. It's fine. It'll work out. It'll work out. It'll work out. Okay. Phew. All right. So that was me using my scientist. Uh, not for any of this stuff, but just to get the two research so that I could grab both of those. And now at the end of my turn, we put out another level A and another A. What's this one? Oh, this is crystals, minerals, and titanium. That does not fit with what I'm going for. Okay, so that was my second action. And I've used up all my cards this time very quickly, although I still have three worker placement spots. Luna's second action is, Hi, 
I'm Luna. Oh, but wait! Wait, 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 at the beginning of my second turn, my first turn was I just grabbed that card while well, grabbing was good. Second turn is, hey, I've got a scientist. If I look over here, Luna only has one scientist as well. That means Luna does not have the clear majority for the science bonus. Oh! So actually, before I rush over here and grab those tiles that I want so desperately that were, what were they, there and there and all that money, before I grab all of those, before I do that, I should say, hey, everybody, I'm tied for maximum scientists, and boom, do this. And because it's uh, two, or it's because I have one scientist, get two coins. I should have totally done that. I should have totally done that first. Although I'm risking these disappearing. But I think that's the better thing, because provided they don't go, I'll be able to get them next turn when I use my scientists. So while I still had a majority, I took it. Now, Luna says, hi, I'm Luna. I'd like to move up to um, on each of the most valuable company tracks. Okay, fine, Luna. Well, um, this one and this one, these are the two most valuable companies. So she moves up. She's got her first share and she continues to move up over there. Oh, and then she does a very big thing. Luna is going to discard the latest face-up special research plan. Okay, that's this one. I didn't even talk about this, but this is a research that instead of being showing that I've got um, energy or um, resources, I have to spend money to do this. She just snagged that for herself. It's nice. It's worth points. It's a way to turn money into points at the end of the game. C'est la vie. And the A research plan that matches this slot. Okay. And she also gains any coins in the supplement space. She grabbed those coins. And she's going to take an A. She took this from the C. No! 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 There is no way that happens. This was in her C slot. Her C slot is this one. No! How could she know that's the one I wanted? Oh my gosh, I can't believe that. She took the... Oh! I gambled. I gambled. What were the chances she... she you know, I snoozed, I lost. I lost. Oh my gosh, new ones came out. Oh no. No. That was perfect for my scientific research. And she took it. She took it because it just randomly, if, if this card had been here, she would have taken this one instead. Or that one, but she took the perfect one. Again, it's like she knew. It's like she's plotting against me. All right, so that was it for her. Now... I can use my scientist to get, and what do you know? The thing, I, the extra money I wanted is gone. The thing I wanted is gone. Oh my gosh, that is painful. You know what? It's so painful. I don't think I'm going to grab any of those. I'm just going to go on ahead and say, I'm going to use my two research points to get two more coins. Fine. Fine. So now I've got a bunch of money. That's what I did instead. Oh, Luna. All right. Luna, meanwhile, says, oh, I'm sorry. I didn't know what was happening. I just draw cards randomly. And hi, on the company track of which I lead by the biggest margin, I move up two. That would be this. She moves up two more. She now has two shares of this company. And, oh, I'd like that company to expand. Two energy spent towards the max. All right. So that means this time she wants to head off. Right. So with two energy, what could she reach? She could reach this shuttle that's a two, or she could reach this shuttle that's a five. So right off the bat, of her two energy, she's going to spend one to reach this shuttle that's a five. Now, although I gave her no benefit, now she has one more energy to spend. She needs an energy plus an energy to make it over there. So she can't make it there. She can't make it over into, her, um, into this other company. Uh, she doesn't want to take the same one. So she has one more energy left. The best she could do, she would need two energy to kick me out. Um, she, uh, the rules actually, let me double check this. If she can't, will she take this extra space? Because she can't move over here. She needs two to move over there. She needs two to move over there. One, two, or one, two. Hmm. Yeah, let's see here. So there's this whole little section where it talks about what she'll do. There's no vacant spot she can reach at all with her remaining energy. So what she does is she looks at the company she's furthest behind in. And of... Oh! She oust somebody! She's going to oust somebody! Okay, so what's she furthest behind in? 
Um, right. She is, uh, right. See, so two behind there. Uh, right here, uh, one behind there, two behind there, uh, tied. So this is the one she's furthest behind in. She wants to hurt this company. Oh, but this company has nothing to oust. So I think that means she does nothing because this doesn't say about, hey, if she can't do the one she's furthest behind, go for the one she's next furthest behind. Folks, um, for the most part, Luna's rules have been very clear. This is a, really the first time I've played with her where I'm not really quite sure what to do. So you might want to check the Klingon subtitles right now because I'm sure Paula would have done some research. But according to the way I'm reading this, she just doesn't use that, set, that last energy. But now she is done. So we take her three cards, shuffle them up, discard them, and okay. Oh, and in this case, where there's a tie, remember in the first round, this was the higher thing, so she got rid of this. If it's a tie, she doesn't leave either of them, so it's like she still has these majorities. Not that I care, because, but anyway, so she held on to the majorities in this particular case. So now it's back to me. She's not going to do anything more. I've got two more workers. Workers, workers. I can't do any of these maxes to work my way up the way she's been working her way up, so I should probably come over here and do some stuff. Okay, let's go on ahead and spend two credits that I just recently got to do my trick where I am going to complete this. I talked about it last time, I'm going to do it this time. And so, and, uh, right, so she's out. I'm going to pass again. Oh, let's see. So I could trash a card. I have two credits. Two credits would not let me buy any card. I need three credits to buy this to get the big crystal card. So I'm not going to do that. I could spend one credit. Yeah, why not? And increase my output. Or I've got two more. I can increase my energy. What am I going to do in the third round? Now that I, just out of spite, I've decided I'm not going to do any science at all. I'm just, I, I, a pox upon me. Although I need to do science at least to here so that I can unlock that. Oh, unless I just say, heck, I'm only going to get two of these three objectives. But remember, once I get all three objectives, I get a worker placement spot, only I can use for the rest of the game, that says, hey, spend one coin and move up three on any company you want. That is hugely valuable. That's crazy powerful. So I do want to do that. So I do still want to push the science. And, um, right... So I could spend, I have some more energy next turn, or hey, I could just do one science, which I could get one coin, or I could get one, but she took all the good ones. All the good ones. Are there any that are good for me? Are there any that combine titanium? Yes, there is. There's this one, which I could buy, but look at this. I need to have one titanium and four carbon, but you know what? I'm the freaking carbon king, baby. I've been going cuckoo for carbon because of that objective. Yeah, what the heck? Let's come over here to hold on to first player. Uh, well, not that she was taking it from me anyway. But more importantly, to do one science to snag this. I will put this here. And if I have four carbon and one titanium on display, I could rush past both of these. And if I move here... I'll make four coins. I think that's worth it. I think that's going to definitely pay off my carbon investment. So, I haven't given up on science after all. Hooray! And a new one comes out. Okay, she's already passed. I'm out. So now I've got to um, recover one of these sets of cards. The two energy, the one energy, and the titanium. Let's get the energy and the titanium. Let's bring this back. And now these come up here for future recovery. The, all these are gone. Bye bye into a uh, discard pile. All, everybody else slides over. New ones come out. And over the course of the game, these get more powerful. These become better and better cards, as you might imagine, because this deck is stacked. And uh, nobody changed first player, so I'm first player again. And so, is this the turn, folks? Do, can I do it? I forget. I've got. I can't. What happened? I didn't grab my carbon! Oh, right, right. I knew this. I knew this. I knew I wasn't going to be able to grab my carbon because I used it all up. So this is not the turn, but no, this is the turn. This is the turn when I go helium. Where's my helium guy? Where's my helium? Oh, right. All oh, right. All oh, right. All right. I forgot the other thing. We get our workers back. And when I got this worker back, this was my helium guy. That's my helium guy. Worker, worker, worker. All right. So now the nice thing about these is when you invest in them, you know, I have to spend two coins to do this. This goes into a space. So I'm going to play four cards because this is going to be one of the cards I play this turn. Nice, nice, nice. Another one is going to be 
this one because these two combined in one turn will generate one, two, th um, three, four, five. We'll generate five helium, which will jump me up to the next thing and will unlock my first. Yeah, baby. Okay, so uh, I'm going to play those two and I got to do two more. I'm saving my carbon so when I get my other carbon card back... Let's see. So I know I'm going to recover this one. I'm going to recover all this stuff. So let's... Oh, what am I going to put there? Let's, uh, let's do a... Uh, you know, I've got some energy. Let's actually do some energy. There we go. How about this? All right. So I put all these face down. Everybody's doing it. Everybody reveals save time. Oh, she should have um, emptied those out. So now I reveal. She reveals what she's got going on. And we also need... Oh, folks. She has one... Two, she's run out, so she'd take her deck, and where are they? Oh, there they are. And we grab a new higher level card, and this goes in her deck. Now, we're not supposed to know what this is, but just to give you an idea. Um, all right, so she's moving up. Uh, right, and so she expects, starting with the less valuable. Oh, wow, and she has two scientists off of this. She increases two helium. She has six of something. Boom. So that goes into her deck. And that might be the first thing she draws. Who knows? So over the time, the same way I'm getting more powerful because I'm getting more cards and whatnot, she gets more cards too. She's a clever girl, that Luna. So that goes in there. And actually, I think this should have happened first. And then when I ran out, it should have gone in. So I mean, it could have shown up there, but eh, we're not going to worry about that too terribly much right now. So anyway, so there we go. There were her upgrades. And we now reveal stuff. And we reveal that, hey, she's got four energy... Um, right. She moves up two helium. Boom. She's got four energy and three carbon. And me, how does she keep doing this? I only have three energy. How did she know to do four energy? Luna! Oh my gosh. Because I would love to have the majority of energy so that I could work my way up my favorite company. But she blocked me. And so I have to wait. Because once she's done these three things, this might go away. So I don't want to spend my energy right now. So how about, as the first player, I go on ahead and visit for the first time um, my field scientist to advance my helium-3 marker. So this guy says, hey, advance two plus one for every field scientist you have. That's a field scientist. That's field scientist. This one by itself is doing four. This one's doing one more. And then plus I get two coins. So I just moved up. So that's done. And that's done. Oh, hold on. Hold on, hold on a second. Hold on a second. Hold on a second, second. Because these are scientists. Right now, before I do this, when I do this, I'm going to get two coins and I'm going to move up one, two, three, four, five, which is 10 points. And I'm getting closer to unlocking this slot. Then I'd have to move up one, two, three more, or one, two, three more to unlock that, to get closer to winning that, and to start playing four cards at a time. Right. But right now, she has one scientist. I've got, I don't know if this counts as a scientist. I'm not sure, but I've got one scientist, which means I do have max, I'm, I'm tied for max, which means I could come over here as my first action and get two coins. And then I could do it. So let's take advantage of that. And then let's see what she's going to do. She says, oh, hi, I'm Luna. I'd like three coins and I'd like to do two scientific research, please. Boom, boom, which says, boom, I've unlocked. So from now on, she's going to start playing four cards per turn. And she made two coins because she's Luna. And what else did she do? She also says, oh, I'd like to do a worker placement. She's in slot B, so she blocks this space. Nobody can grab that, which increases your income or your, your output of one thing. So that was her turn. Now, for my second turn, I will do this. I will get two coins for my the guy I got right from the get-go. And then a one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. So, one, two, three more, and I unlock a bonus. These are done. But because I did this on a single turn, I grabbed four or more, I have unlocked a bonus worker I can use whenever I want, and I got two more coins. Let's take a five. I've got so much here. Uh, all right, one, two, three, four, five. And so I've, I've got six. I'm rich. Rich, I tells ya. Which means I could just bump that money directly into recruiting whoever I want. Oh, look at this level three carbon I could get. But I've got a carbon plan for later. So that was my turn. It is Luna's second turn. Luna says, hi. I'd like three credits, please. All right, here's five to change. And, uh, oh, I'd also like four helium because things are really easy for me because I'm Luna. 
One, two, three, four. And, um, oh my gosh, she just unlocked her other one. Wait, does she unlock it when she gets there or when she passes it? I'm not quite sure. Hmm. Yep. Boom. She is going to start playing five cards every turn. Oh my goodness gracious. That is very scary. Oh, it doesn't look good for our team, for Team Rotto. All right, so uh, she moved up four. She got her three credits, and then she's going to put another worker. Oh, this was her super card. No wonder she moved up so fast. She pulled it out. All righty, so she's in, what, slot C, which means she wants to block that, which means I wouldn't be able to hold on to it again if I wanted. All right, and so now it is my turn. And I don't want to use my energy yet until I'm waiting to see if she will kill this. Where should I see? Although, right, so currently it's 50-50 chance. If this one comes up, she'll kill that one. If this one comes up, she'll kill that one. So I don't want to use my energy yet um, because I'd like to do that. So what else should I do? I got a lot of money. I could buy a card. I'm going to use this energy to start expanding more, probably kick them out because I don't care about this company. I want them gone and start moving into other areas. But in the meantime, what am I going to do? Well, you know, one thing that might uh, consider, I forgot to put this out. I'm sure Paulo mentioned that. So there's a coin to be had there. If I just want to come over here and hold on to this and grab one of those and get a coin, are any of those good for me? Oh my gosh, yes, they are. There's an energy titanium one. And, um, all right, but this is only one sign, so I couldn't grab that one. So I could go for that. What am I going to do? Honestly, I'm not quite sure. But the interesting thing is I got an extra. I can only use this once, and then it's gone as I've unlocked that. And I'm close to doing that next round in round four of seven. I will unlock this and I'll probably uh, finish this, but I'm still a ways off for doing that. But I do have extra workers to make up for the fact that they've got extra cards they're playing. Yeah, I've got a lot of option, folks, and the game is just starting to warm up. But I think, I think I'm going to stop right there because that should give you a pretty good idea of the basics of Sky Mines. And if you'd like to hear some final thoughts, now you can hit that eye in the top right corner screen. Or follow the show notes in 5, 4, 3, 2, 1.